Celebrate Voices Day. God bless y'all. Y'all look so wonderful. I heard you had a great gathering yesterday up there. I was not able to be there, but you look like you had good fellowship. Amen. What's his name? Emmanuel. God is with us. Let's just say amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. And certainly we thank God for our ministry of music. It ministers to us and uh, in such marvelous ways. And uh, we praise God for the best band on this side of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all, y'all just don't know how 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 good you get it, and uh, so we praise God. And all of that rises and falls on leadership. Can you say leadership? Amen. So we salute you, Sister Walls, do an amazing job, and uh, and you know how we say, had it not been for the Lord <laughs> on our side, and so. We salute you and thank God for your ministry. I just wanted to put a little tag on the text that Brother Taylor was mentioning. These tubs are not for clothes out of your closet. These are for brand new clothes. Hello? Amen. Brand new. Somebody say brand new. Amen. With tags on them. And we're going to, if you have some today, We'll open them up at the time of offering. They'll be here every Sunday. The gift card basket will be here. And uh, it uh, is for, for, for what kind of clothes? New. New, new. new clothes. Amen. Amen. If you want to clean out your closet, Goodwill, Salvation Army, the Upper Street. Amen. But we want to be a blessing with, somebody say, new clothes. Uh, thank God for the Advent reading for this Sunday shared by the McQuarries and uh, for this season that reminds us uh, that Jesus is coming again. We started off last Sunday in uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1. We'll be right there again, another couple of verses, uh, reminding us that nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. It won't always be like this. The darkness is what? There it is on the screen. The darkness is real. Power will be restored. And out of humility will come glory. Can you say glory? Amen. And uh, so, you can go ahead, my brother. As we go to verse 2, oh, what they have done in the church now, the lights done gone off, they didn't pay the bill. No, keep it off, keep it off. I'll, I'll call for it in a minute. Mm-hmm. I remember the Mount Pisgah Church in Jersey City, my father's last pastorate. The lights in the sanctuary would dim, and then the spotlight that was on the pulpit would be the only light that was lit. Verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You can turn them on now. For just a few moments, it dawned on me. Look at somebody and say, it, it dawned. It dawned on me. It, it, it dawned on me. I enjoy uh, watching choir members with joy sing, and uh, I'm always looking for the, the brethren up there, and uh, so Pop Guilford and uh, Brother Alfred, and prayers are with him, and the passing of his brother and his family, and I saw them singing so joyfully, uh, and it's because somewhere in their journey, as you heard Brother Chapman calling the name Emmanuel and Brother Walls, uh, uh, somewhere in the journey, there was a light and revelation 
that made this journey a little more easier to bear. It's just a little more easier to bear. It's it's still dark, uh, but the light makes it a little more easier to navigate. I woke up this morning and it was it was dark, and uh, um, uh, my my spirit was ready, and my body was saying, "Hold on." And I, I had to rebuke the bed and say, turn him loose and let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go. <laughs> you, you ever had to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do it today? I know it's, it's gray, it's rainy, it's, man, it's a wonderful day to sleep in. And just, I could just turn the church on, online, turn on my tablet, turn on my, it'd be just so much easier. And... Uh, I woke up this morning, it was dark. It was dark, and I am dark. And I was reminded that when you're in the dark and you wake up dark, you better get to step in. <laughs> ah, it dawned on me. In my journey, I appreciate the sun over the horizon. And I don't know if this is because I'm getting older, Brother Sedgwick. I don't know if this is because of that, but I like the sun sets a little better than the sun rises. I don't know where that came from because I was always a sunrise person. I was born at sunrise. My Kenyan Swahili name is Kalenjin, and they call me Kip Koech, one who is born at sunrise. But there's something about the coming of the night that is both refreshing and also revealing. In our text, as we touched very briefly last Sunday to get you ready for the, this period of, 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 of word and, and seeing what is in the word that we can extract for our own journey. Uh, the, the, the writer Isaiah, this is in Isaiah, the first part of Isaiah, he begins with, nevertheless, I love that word, nevertheless, because you have to go back before it to find out what is it that's going to happen in my favor in spite of what I just read, in spite of what's going on, in spite of all of the political circus that we are in, there's a nevertheless. And here's the nevertheless, that the light is going to be seen. Uh, the darkness and despair will not go on. And then over in the hood, in Zebulun and Nephtali, over in the hood, in Zebulun and Nephtali, uh, that, 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 that's going to go through something. There's going to be a light that turns the experience around. Do I have a witness thus far? And then here comes this reality. People who walk in darkness will see. And that's a puzzling thing. But can I just give you three affirmations, maybe to encourage you in your journey, maybe to help you this week as you begin to navigate through some difficult situations. Here's the first encouragement for you. Number one, you can walk and live in darkness. Yeah, I tried that and, uh, in the middle of the night without a night light. It'll make you speak in tongues when you stub your, tell them you're in church. Just tell them you're in church. Can't take the call right now. When you stub your toe on the bed in the middle of the night, mm, <laughs> Pastor, how can you live and walk in darkness? The text says that there are 
people who are living and walking in the land of darkness. Naphtali and Zebulon by the Sea of Galilee. That's Jesus' hometown. People still had to function to walk and live in darkness. How many of you get up at old dark 30? I know some of my military brothers and sisters know what old dark 30 is. It's, it's when you get up and it's still dark, but you have to function and live in darkness. And here's the amazing thing. People who walk and live in darkness must have some abilities or sharpened senses that others don't have. <laughs> Uh, uh, and, and, and forgive me for, for those who are more fluent uh, in the language of Nigeria. Shimamanda Ngozi Adike. Oh, I got it. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Nigerian author. And here's what she says about living and walking in darkness. She says, uh, from Nigeria, nobody thinks of themselves as black. In Nigeria, 150 million black people. Nobody thinks of themselves as black. In many West African countries, she goes on to say, and I quote, we don't have race as an identifier of us. She says, when I first came to the U.S., I considered myself Catholic, Igbo, and Nigerian. And she said, I quickly understood that there was another label that they put on me called black. And she said, I had never been identified by my race. Maybe my tribe, but not my race. She goes on and I quote, black was not a value-free idea. To be called black was that people made assumptions about you. Mm -hmm. and she said there was a professor who was surprised that I wrote the best essay in the class. Mm -hmm. She said and I fast realized that he was surprised because he didn't expect a black person to write the best essay in the class. <sighs> she goes on to say, for me, it was a learning process. Now, I very much identify as black. I've learned as a Nigerian living in America how to identify as black. And she said, I've also come to learn about African-American history and to deeply admire the history of African-Americans who are very resilient, who have systematically and consistently been undermined by the American state. She goes on to say, but they continue to thrive, and I think that African American history has been under celebrated. End of quote. Don't tell me you can't live and walk in darkness. We've been living and walking in darkness for a long time, but it dawned on me that that's not a disadvantage. It's an advantage. I was sharing with colleagues, we were talking about you know, jobs and things that we've done in our careers over the years, and I remembered what it was like uh, Sister Janine, to be one of only five black bankers in the sixth richest county in the nation, Sarasota County, Florida, where my grandfather, who grew up right down the street in Louisa County, Virginia, was a chauffeur for the Mellon Bank family. Uh, his grandson was one of only five black bankers in the entire county. Uh -huh. and, and, and I was at 
at, at Coast Bank, which was owned by U. Culver House, who owned the Tampa Bay Bucks, and, and he sold it, uh, thank God, because he was always giving away all our talent to everybody else. That's, that's how y'all, y'all, y'all got uh, uh, my quarterback, uh, the black quarterback, Washington, four Super Bowl uh, touchdowns, uh, Doug Williams. Y'all got Doug Williams because you Culver House would always trade away the best players at Tampa Bay. And, and, and so Sunbank, which is now Truist, bought Coast Bank because it was a mortgage bank. And um, I was one block up the street from the tobacco bank. Yeah, you remember the tobacco bank? Uh, that's NCNB, North Carolina National Bank. That, that, that's how they got their wealth off of tobacco that... Grandmama and granddaddy them harvest. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. And, and, and so at NCNB was Nathan and August. And so I was a block away. And when we would go out to lunch, I'd walk down the main street of Sarasota, Florida and meet them. And then we'd go on down to whatever restaurant we were going down to. August was about 6'5", maybe 260. He had played semi-pro football, much taller than all of us. And so he was usually on the end. Nate, who was Nathan, who was the oldest, was in the middle. And we're just engaged in conversation. And Nathan, and, and August is just looking around. Uh, uh, Brother Gilford, he's looking around. He says, do you see what's happening? And we hadn't even paid attention. Uh, because there were what we call snowbirds who come to Florida for the winter. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm just going to say it like that and, 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 and trust that you understand what I'm saying. And they were pumping the brakes and slowing down their cars because there were three black men uh, walking down Main Street. Uh, 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 clean from head to toe, br br Brother Ingram. We had on our wingtips. Oh, yes, we did. We, we, we had on our pinstripe suits. We had our Oxford button-down shirts. We had our paisley ties blowing in the wind, and we're just engaged in conversation, and the snowbirds were stopping, slowing down their cars to look at this anomaly of three black men, well-dressed, walking in the financial district of the sixth richest county in the nation. And it occurs to me that, that darkness is not a disadvantage. It's an advantage. For we had to get up earlier. We had to work longer. And we had to do things that others didn't do. And that's where I developed the habit of writing personal notes. Every time somebody came to the bank, I'd send them a note. Every time somebody was in the newspaper, I'd send them a little note with cut off of the clipping. And so guess what? Watch this. They say, well, uh, they would tell their friends, go down to Sunbank. Uh, uh, well, who shall I ask for? Just ask for that black fella. Ain't but one down there. Oh, you, you didn't get that. You didn't get that. Well, you, you, you are the ain't but one. Uh, that's an advantage. That's a time for you to shine. In the midst of darkness, you can walk and live and thrive. Pastor, it's dark. And yeah, you're alive. Let me say that one more time. Pastor, but it's dark. Yeah, but you're alive. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe I'll talk to the virtual audience. Maybe they'll get the shouting in their homes. So, yeah, pastor, it, it's just dark. We're dealing with so much that's going on, yeah, but you're alive. Which means, uh, watch this, the darkness didn't wake you up. He woke you up. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way and guess what? He knows that it's dark. And knows that you can live and walk in darkness. So that, that, that's reality number one. I hope you can shut off of that. Here's, here's number two. Here, here's number two. Not only will you walk and live in darkness, but did you know that you will see and shine through the darkness? You will see and shine through the darkness. 
Do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see? Darkness heightens your senses. Ah, Reverend, it's dark over here. Yeah. Uh, it's dark, and, I, and I'm dark. You too, different flavors, but we all dark. But it heightens our senses. According to the studies, darkness makes your hearing more sensitive. <laughs> well, I can stop right there for just a minute. Uh, some of us couldn't hear God when there was plenty of money in the pocket. Some of us couldn't hear God uh, uh, when the health was a plus, good checkup. Some of us couldn't hear God when we had just gotten a an unexpected merit raise and a promotion. We couldn't hear God, but let some darkness come. All of a sudden, we could. I hear the voice of the Lord say, "Darkness makes your hearing more sensitive." A separate effect may be, and I quote, that if we go into a dark environment. We are more sensitive to inputs on the senses that we can use. <laughs> it's not until you put in a difficult situation that you find out that God has put some stuff on the inside of you that you didn't know you had. You didn't know you could survive. You didn't know you could make it. This attention-driven effect is likely even more temporary than the defect uh, that is, and as I previously described, but it only lasts a few minutes. But that darkness comes all of a sudden. Our senses are heightened. In the Unseen Beauty website, that's a UK website, and I was reading something the other week that um, uh, historians have concluded I don't know why it took us so long to figure it out. Uh, but I got some sisters and mothers in here could have told them that a long time ago. Historians have concluded that throughout history, uh, as a gender, the black female has always been regarded as the most beautiful. Did I have a sister say amen somewhere? And if they didn't, brother, if you're sitting next to your significant other, you better go to Hollywood right now. And I, I read that the other day, and I had to read it again, and read it again, and read it again. There are psychological effects of light and dark, which help us to see and shine through darkness. Ah, we've also come to stand that this dichotomy of dark and light, quote from this site, plays a fundamental part in our understanding of the world and how we present ourselves. When there is light and then there is dark. Uh, now we deal with the physical effect, but there is a psychological effect on the human brain. When we don't get enough light, it can throw our minds and bodies into a spin. Zirkadian rhythm is about this effect of dark and light. And when it gets dark and the sun begins to go down, then the body produces melanin, a hormone produced in the pineal gland that helps to control our sleep. That's why when we woke up this morning and it was dark, we wanted to just lay in the bed just a little bit longer. It produces serotonin, which stabilizes our mood. So you know how we are after we get through eating. The, uh, children, you got to take that volume down just a little bit. Move these toys out the way. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear that. Why? It's not that mom and daddy don't love you. It's that after that time and, and the sun is going down, that serotonin starts kicking in. And I start, oh. Uh, it can make people sometimes what we call sad, seasonal, affective disorder. Uh, 
now, now this is not my profession. I'm just sharing uh, all this pieces of information that help me to understand what light and dark does to us. Uh, and that the seasonal affective disorder is linked to winter and autumn when the days get shorter and the nights get longer. When it's dark outside, our bodies want us to go to sleep. But as the researchers talk about darkness is vital, you sleep better in the dark. Uh, animals find food in the dark. These are the things that happen. Your body clock keeps in time when it's dark. Plants anticipate the arrival of winter, so they throw off their leaves so they can survive in the dark. Darkness protects the environment. Uh, don't be sad. Seasonal affective disorder because natural darkness can be a very empowering experience. The bigger the problem is, there is quite a lot of uh, darkness around it. The greater the light will be when it penetrates my dark experience. David said it. Here's how he said it. Yea, though I walk through the valley, wait a minute now, of the shadow. Mm. Shadow. <laughs> shadow. I will, what? Shadow of death. What are you saying, David? Oh, death is not in the valley. It's just a shadow. And what David understood about shadows is wherever there's a shadow, there has to be some light. <laughs> what creates val shadows in the valley are mountains that are trying to block the light from coming in the valley. And what we realize is that it's not dark. It's just the absence of the or the blockage of light. That's why David says, uh, when I'm in those kind of situations, how am I going to get through? The Lord. Mm -hmm. He is my light. And he is my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The, the Lord is the strength. He gives me strength of my life. <sighs> of whom will I be afraid? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. You will see. And you will shine in the darkness. Finally, not only do you see and shine, and not only uh, do you uh, understand that in darkness you can have strength and manifest great power. But here's the final thing. I can walk and live in darkness. I can see and shine in darkness or through the darkness because the Lord is my light. But then finally, I can shout and reap from the darkness. <laughs> I can what? Shout and reap. Uh, the interesting thing about Isaiah is, like, like the Apostle Paul who quoted Isaiah a whole lot, you've got to read Isaiah closely because Isaiah will change voices on you. Uh, and he'll change the focus, and that's why you have to read him quickly. Up, uh, up until this time, he's in these first couple of verses, he's talking to the people. Uh huh. Yeah. The nevertheless, those of you who walk in darkness, you're going to see a great light. Uh, there's going to be uh, the light to come out of your despair. There's going to be a new hope. But then he changes the focus of the prophetic utterance. And now he's talking to God about what God is going to do for his people. 
Did, did you get this? Right there in verse 3, he changes and says, you, who's you? Him. The Lord. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you, who's the you? That's the Lord God. You will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You, who's you? That's God. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. Now, 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 that's, that, that's the first person he's talking to God or talking about God in the third person. The activity of God is neither bounded nor limited by the states of our light or our darkness. Let me say that one more time. The activity of God is not limited or bounded by our light or darkness. It could be dark in every corner of your life. But when God says, when God says, when God says, let there be light, darkness has got to flee. This is the wonderful thing about God. When he says, let there be light, there is. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be breakthrough. Let there be blessing. Let there be promotion. Let there be victory. Let there be glory. Whenever God says it. Um. That the, uh, my African brothers and sisters, uh, there was a conference, and a curator from Africa forgot what nation was speaking. And um, he talked about this thing in American political world called the unseen hand. Uh, it's, it's the distraction uh, tactic that is used to distract people from what's really going on. Uh -huh. And so in the presentation, he says, uh, uh, hold on to your seats. He says, he says, you elected a black president and you got distracted with the fact that you got a black president. <laughs> But on the other side of the world, there was still a multi-billion dollar war that was going on that was dragging your economy down. So while we're distracted and enamored with the fact that we have a black president, there's still violence going on on the other side of the world that is costing us billions of dollars, which is why you understand they fought President Obama so much about pulling out of the war because war is profitable business for a few, for just a few. So my brothers and sisters, how am I going to shout and rejoice from the darkness? Focus shifts. It's not just the rays of light, but it's the source of the light that we look to in times of darkness. There's so much going on. Uh, what do you do when you want to know how to navigate, when you need to hear from God, when you need a revelation, when you need something to dawn on you? Just change the channel. Change the channel. Change the channel. Make him the focus 
up your observation. Make him the focus of your oblation. Make him the focus of your opportunity. Look at him and say, no matter how dark it is, you will enlarge and the people will rejoice. You will bless and the people will rejoice. You will provide and the people will rejoice. You will open doors and the people will rejoice. You will make a way and the people will rejoice. He says they're going to rejoice like people at harvest. Rejoice over plunder. You will break the yokes. You will lift the heavy burdens. You will do it just like you did it before. You will do it again. That's how you live in darkness, walk in darkness, see in darkness, shine in darkness, but then shout and rejoice through the darkness. How many of you will testify today that some of your best shouting came after the darkest moments in your life? <laughs> I was lost, but he found me. I was sick, but he healed me. I was in pain, but he relieved me. I was cast down, but he lifted me up. The hymn writer says, he lifted me up, set my feet on a solid rock, and established my goings. It dawned on me. Many of you know that I'm interested in, in ancestry. And now I'm beginning to learn the difference, and this is not a commercial for either one of these I'm beginning to learn the difference between Ancestry.com and AfricanAncestry.com. I've done the DNA. A lot of our family has done the DNA. And uh, I, I, I learned something, that Ancestry.com, um, their, their DNA testing is, a, is, is key to help you understand how much of you is from a particular nation? Uh, how much of you are European? How much of you are Senegal? I'm 23% uh, Ghanaian, uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, and how much of you? But uh, that, that's about how much. And the reality is all of us, <laughs> even the man with the orange hair, all of us, <laughs> All of us got some black in you. <laughs> I told you when I woke up this morning, it was dark, and I was still dark. But African ancestry is not so much about the combination and who I'm from, but it's where I'm from. <laughs> what are my people like? What were the ancestors like? What kind of convictions did they have? And then it hit me the other day after spending seven hours on three concourses of the African American Museum as I just immersed myself all. I walked in when they opened and I walked out when they closed and I only got three floors in. Plus the cafe, they had, they had shrimp and grits. And I walked out, and I realized, Dr. Ghost, it dawned on me that God did not make a mistake when he brought you into this world with a little color, a little pigmentation, in your skin now, we got cocoa, we got caramel, we got chocolate mocha, we got white chocolate mocha. But however you look at it, it's all got some chocolate in it. It hit me. Why? Because the Lord is my light and no matter, no matter how dark my path, his word will be a lamp and a light. 
show me where to go when it's dark. It dawned on me. Did it dawn on you that you can still walk and live in darkness? You're doing it. You, you can still see and shine in the darkness. You're doing it. But now, maybe you haven't experienced this before. But do you know you can shout and rejoice through the darkness? Because the Lord is made a way. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word with your people. And God, for those who are online and watching, those who are in this sanctuary, help us to experience the power of that midnight hour in Bethlehem when you chose the darkest moment in the history of your people to put a star in the heavens to indicate that they could have light, they could see, they could shout and rejoice in spite of Help us as we go through this week and through this journey called life to realize the power that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. My appeal is, as we're all standing all over the sanctuary, there may be somebody here. You can see natural light, but you haven't yet let the light of Christ come into your own life. I had a friend in town, childhood friend, known each other for over 50, since we were 10. And we used, to, here's what we say to each other, Brother Ty, uh, we always say to each other, when did you fall in love with hip hop? When I was 10 years old. Some of you gonna get that in a minute, and if you don't, it's all right. It, 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 it ain't going to put you in heaven or keep you out. <laughs> so, as we're walking around and realizing that many of this, much of how much our life had been influenced, and, and I said to them, um, the brochure is going to tell you that it's going to take two hours to go through this museum. There is nothing else planned today because you can't do this in two hours. All right. We didn't, we didn't even go upstairs. That was it. I just, I said, we're going to start at the beginning and try to get these three concourses and got ready to go to store, close. Everything was closing up and they were telling us to get out. And as I immersed myself in that experience and realized just how the Lord had walked through and in and around our lives our mothers were the music teachers in in the city of hartford connecticut one at the black high school the mixed high school and then the other mother who's both of them are, are gone was at the other high school where we realized the power of music and what it had done in our narrative to help us navigate times like these and, and, and so, this song is an invitation. It's what it is. You, you can be in beautiful light. You don't have to stay in darkness. Here's the invitation. Come, come. Where the dew drops of mercy are bright. They shine all around us. How they do it, Mother? By day and by night. Who is Jesus, the light of the world? So in a dark world, you can walk in. It dawned on me, beautiful light. Come where, come where the dew drops. Mercy, our pride. 
shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of. So here's the invitation. You need to be saved or you need a church home. We're inviting you to walk in the light. Make your way down any one of these aisles. I'll meet you here at this chancel rail. We will pray with you so that you can know the light of the world for yourself. And if you need a church home, a place where you can grow and be nurtured, we're inviting you to come. Oh, Jesus, the light of the world. Oh, walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where? 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 Tell somebody else, walk in, walk in the light, you teach the light, come where? Oh, shine all around us, my day and my night, see us, the light of now. Here's what I want you to do to get ready to receive the offering. If you had a, an it dawned on me experience, I just want you to turn and testify to somebody. Whatever it did, whatever day it was, what the Lord has done for you. But if you know that you have Jesus in your life, the light of the world, I want you to just turn and tell somebody, it dawned on me. Tell somebody, it dawned on me. It dawned on me that I can make it through a dark world. It dawned on me that I can make it through difficult times. It dawned on me the two drops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day. Jesus is I hope that helped you a little bit on your journey. I hope that helped you a little bit on your journey. Let's get ready to receive our gifts. Every Sunday, next couple of Sundays, we're gonna have these pins available for you to bring what kind of clothes? New clothes, new, new, new clothes. Amen, tags on. Now that might come out of your closet, but new clothes. Something, something, because how many of you are going to give used clothes, used gifts for Christmas? Brothers, you know, you bet I be having the girl know you, something used. You know, unless it's a, you know, it could be a used Mercedes. <laughs> Brothers, y'all know you can Besides, you know, you can hand that clean something used. Unless it's a used Mercedes, used SUV. No, all right, all right. <laughs> Amen. So we want to be a blessing in the house of God. And so at the time of offering, you'll be able to come around and also bring your clothes if you have them today. You can put them in the bins. Don't forget your Christmas offering. And we give God praise and honor and glory for what you are doing. Are we going to do that other piece, Sister, Sister Walls? We're doing that other piece as well. With the CDs, are we going to do that as well? The CDs, they're here, we can do that? Okay, all right. Here's what, then I better, I'm going to give, well, I'm going to give my, make sure I give my Christmas offer. Here's what we're going to do. How many do we get? All right. The first 60 people that we count having given your Christmas offer. Doesn't matter whether it's 100 you saw it up on the screen, 150 or 25. The first 60 people, we're going to give you one of the CDs from Joe Douglas and the Spirit of Praise. That's a gift. Amen. So finance, treasury, they'll keep up with the record of that. 
we know they'll look at it online and the first 60 people we just gonna give them a cd you give your christmas offer it doesn't matter whether it's 25 50 i see some of you going straight to your app right now to make sure you'll get in all right uh, when it comes in like that it's already dated in time we know first 60 people that we record giving your christmas offering we're going to give you the cd from joe douglas and the spirit of praise they were awesome last sunday weren't they amen amen they were awesome and they will be back well it dawns on me lord that when we sow into your work that you bless us 30 60 and 100 times over bless now the seed and the sower bless the gift and the giver as we bring it with joy in jesus name amen if you have new clothing if you have gift cards that will go to the women's ministry initiative bring them now the usher shall direct you down the center aisle say amen amen that got it going on brother taylor noted to me he said did you see the first gift of clothes was brought by a child <laughs> did you see that and there's several down there and uh, he said that as a male child i said the child shall lead them hello <laughs> that's what he said the child shall lead them so we thank God for these presentations. These will be available every Sunday. We will secure them and empty them out and bring them back, fill them up, fill them up, bring them back. And if we need to get, if we need to get five more tubs, because y'all going to bring some more stuff, we'll do that too. Let's just say amen. Come on, let's all stand as uh, we leave from this place, enjoying the goodness of the Lord. And uh, that's it. Nobody but in the black church can we can take it and do anything with can we can <laughs> do now unto the light of the world who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and honor dominion and power both now henceforth and forevermore oh Jesus <laughs> God bless you have a blessed week